Hello, hello everyone in Sky. It's Ashavri, your community manager here for another week of patch notes with all of you. Um, just, you know, let me know if you can all hear everything and everything's good. Um, and with that, let's get right into it. So in this one, this bird is on fire. I, I just, I just thought that that is, this is going to be a fun one. And that is the theme for this patch. So let's get into it. Um, I'm pretty hyped for these changes. First of all, new feature is this new shiny end turn button and a new shiny turn timer. That's right. Um, what you see here is this beautiful animated, like very clear and easy to see end turn button, which is sparkly. And even, even here, even when you're like selecting your cards at the beginning, and you know, now it's not at the top of the screen where it's super hard to like see. Now it's in a nice place, right? You know, right so that you know what's happening. So we are happy with this. <laughs> Who is Ash and why is she no longer on fire? <laughs> Don't kill me, Bacon. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. It is fire. That, that, from, that's the best word to describe it. So have fun with this for anyone new here, any of our new players. This is going to make it so much easier. And, you know, just in terms of being like, how much time do I have? Or like, how do I like end my turn? Because I made, made all the moves that I wanted to make. So there you go. Now let's get into some of the <laughs> improvements. <laughs> Thanks, Bacon. <laughs> so some of these other improvements that we have in here is card selection now shows a message when you're waiting for an opponent. So that's awesome. Um, it also tweaked, we also tweaked animation timing in the card selection. So things will be a bit smoother. We've also tweaked animations in general for smoother gameplay and attachment names no longer pop up on graveyard cards. Okay. And cards you win after a game tilt at a nicer angle for readability purposes. So <laughs> I spy a two cost fire card. Hmm. Don't know what you're talking about, Bacon. <laughs> Let's get into some of our bug fixes before we get into some of the changes that uh, Coulter has made. So bug fixes, we fixed multiple bugs that prevented some tutorial voice lines from playing. So that should be nice and smooth now. Again, try the tutorial. And if you do have any problems, you can of course report them to me in Discord, to Marcelo. Um, and if you're on social media, you can reach out to our social media team and we've got you back. Um, we've also fixed a bug where card selection cards in the tutorial were flipped backwards. So that should no longer be a problem. Thanks for your reports. We fixed multiple bugs involving reconnecting. Just so you know, the connection issues are something that we're always like working to improve. So our team is really on that, always making sure it's working at the best of its ability. We really appreciate all the details that you've provided for us um, in Discord and in our feedback um, to help us make this process smoother. So yeah, um, let us know how this works now. Every time things are getting better, let us know. And of course, if you have problems, you can always let us know. Um, so the last two bugs, we fixed a bug where you would have no valid actions after reconnecting. And we fixed a bug where some tool tips were missing on spell cards. So just a few things here and there. Hello, Rary. Welcome and welcome to the stream. So that basically goes over um, our improvements and bug fixes. But again, I just want to go back to the shiny, the shiny new button, you know, like these beautiful, this end turn button and the card selection button. It's just, it's just gorgeous. All right. So with that, give me a thumbs up and let's get into some of the changes with Coulter. Are you ready? Hey, Coulter, what's up? <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome <laughs> back to the patch notes. Yes. Um, welcome to our Valentine, Valentine's Day week, Valentine's week balance patch. We've got lovely changes today uh, that should help make some cards easier to understand, tone down the power of a few others, and provide some buffs to some cards that have been a bit down on their luck, and we've even got a prism shift and a brand new card, which has been a while. Yes, so excited for that. We had that so. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, let's take um, a look. Yeah, let's first get into some of these changes to our current. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, Anima, everyone's spooked, everyone's spooked, but not to worry, this is mostly a text yeah. change, right, Coulter? <laughs> Yeah, it's just very. This is a change in the service of making anime easy to read. It's something I've wanted to figure out a way to do 
just for newer players, because dusted is a very vague term, uh, especially for specifically um, enchants, because it's not 100% clear what causes them be to be removed from the game, what causes them to be dusted, because dusted just explains that it means removed from the game. Uh, so taking inspiration from this idea of kind of redundant text that I saw on a card in another game, actually, that sort of mentioned... It was a card from Magic that mentioned when you cycle or discard a card, and cycle necessarily involves discarding. It's like one of their keywords. And so it got me thinking, well, what if we just put a redundant word on this card to make it easier for new players to understand? Because yes, when you remove it, it will also get dusted, but this makes it clearer that if you pay to remove Anima, or if you somehow remove it with another card, it will cause it to trigger. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I love this change because I am totally guilty of, you know, having forgotten that it could just, like, no matter how it gets removed, that it would still buff the card. And I've definitely made that mistake so many times. So trust me, great thinking here. <laughs> yeah. So this, this would make it easier for new players. Yeah, <laughs> tricky wording for sure. Um, also, I'm, j I'm just having a field day with the chat. <laughs> the stress was so real and then just like, oh... <laughs> Um, so moving on to the next one, Vapors! <laughs> so Vapors over here, um, again, same kind of change, it's mostly a text change. Uh, Cultus, should we go over these in detail or just skip through the next couple of changes? Uh, this is functionally the same as Anima. I will make a note that for consistency's sake, this does provide a minor buff to Vapors and Anima, where if you, say you have a card that says steal target attachment, and you steal, it steals like your own Anima, thereby removing it from the thing that has the Anima, Anima will trigger and buff it as it moves from one unit to the oh. next. There's currently, that's not really something we can actually do in the game right now. There used to be effects that would perform that action, but they don't exist anymore. Uh, there is one way to pull it off, thanks to another card in this patch, and I'll let the players try to figure out. There's one way to <laughs> make it take advantage of that interaction. Interesting. I, I, I want to see this. Okay, we've got some speculation happening. And with lead, similar change again. But do, do you want to go into this one a little bit more? Um, again, this is the same kind of change, only for lead it means that it's even harder to move lead, because previously you could steal lead via something like Hannah, like an effect said, steal target attachment, it could move lead, but it can no longer move lead. Lead is really stuck on there now. We used super glue for lead. It cannot move oh, even if wow. something steal it. Oh wow! This this is this is this is actually yeah these these are actually buffs definitely. <laughs> this quite buff. Mm -hmm. this, 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 lead is functionally the same. All I was saying for the buff is that if there was a card that said like steal target attachment, it wouldn't be able to remove lead. Whereas previously it would be able to, but there's no card in the game that actually does that. So right. it, it, it doesn't really make a difference. But if there ever was one, you would no longer be able to pull lead off with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So. All right. These things will be almost, almost unnoticeable in most cases. They're just to make the enchants easier to understand for our new players. Yes, this is definitely premium quality premium lead, lead. I must say, premium. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into some to some of the spicy changes. So we've got casket over here, where the change went, went from death draw a unit and trigger its death effect to draw your lowest cost unit trigger its death effect. So why did you make the change to just a random unit to drawing your lowest cost unit? So Casket was a card that had a lot of RNG variants in it where it could draw Hydrex and stuff like that on turn three. Uh, and Bacon and a lot of people in the chat were constantly mentioning that you could high roll just super friggin' high with Casket. And it was in like every heart deck because it was just so universally good, the potential to high roll. And it replaces itself when it dies, and it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, which is, like, pretty good stats for a unit with such a powerful effect. So now Casket will always draw your cheapest unit, similar to stuff like Puppet Master. So it can't high roll as hard, but it's more consistent. Like, you could have a deck with only a couple death units, but if they're, like, fungi and small creatures, then Casket is guaranteed to pull those. So it's more consistent and less swingy basically now and you can still if you want to run a deck with casket and hydrax as like your only units it will still guarantee hydrax but mm -hmm. it's just a little less swingy uh it i left 
Wartlock can still like YOLO into a Hydrex or whatever, but mm. Wartlock is riskier since it kills the unit rather than adding it to hand like Casket does, and Wartlock's stat block is a bit worse for its cost, so it felt... Wartlock is still kind of the fun randomness card, whereas Casket is a little bit of a safer option. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice! Thanks for that explanation, Coulter. So now we're going to go to the next one, which is Iron Mask. And the change, the tweak here is if zero, sorry, is zero cost if you're dead, sorry. Oh, oh my gosh, words. <laughs> so what the text was before is, is zero cost if your deck is empty, give your hero lead armor and banner. And now it's is zero cost if your deck is empty, give your hero armor and banner. So that's a pretty minor change, but just tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I know we have some Iron Mask stands in the community, and mm. while I think that this is a good design for Iron Mask, just because it doesn't work weirdly with Cobalt or things that draw low-cost spells and would therefore guarantee Iron Mask from out of deck for, like, all intellect decks, uh, the lead on Iron Mask is no longer very useful because of the fact that uh, Chains does not permanently remove hero keywords anymore, and lead would block things like... Um, it would block things like study, which needs to attach to your hero, or manage memory. So it kind of had some anti-synergy there, so I figured that mm -hmm. removing um, lead would be a good step towards making Iron Mask a bit better. Um, mm -hmm. So that it doesn't uh, permanently kind of block certain strategies from your usage, which is kind of just the thing about hero lead. It permanently kind of prevents you from using certain Skyweaver cards. So it's just kind of... Right. Uh, and I do think there might be a place for hero led or permanent hero enchants in the future, but it just kind of dumbs down the game a little when it comes in, and it's not like too fun now that it doesn't give Iron Mask the unique edge of beating chains, because chains used to be a lot meaner to hero keywords. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. <laughs> um, all right. So let's move on to the next change. Um, Jar of Souls. So this basically has two changes. One is that um, it went from a six cost to now a seven cost. And then the text changed from um, summon your top three dead units as one one, give them hex and ready them, to now being summon your top three dead units as one one, give them hex, wither, and ready them. All right. Tell, tell us about this one, Coulter. Yeah, so Jar of Souls a while back to sort of combat aggro was moved to six, but the thing is that even at seven, it's still a really good blocker with stuff like Phoenix to aggro decks, and it's just one of the most insane value cards in the whole game because getting to reuse like three summoner death effects from your grave as well as getting some bodies that can trade in. If you have something like Phoenix, it'll explode and blow up the enemy board. Um, mm -hmm. So... I don't think this will be that big of a deal for Jar, because you probably didn't play it on Curve on 6 too often anyways, because usually you want to set up for it. But it's just making it a little weaker so that it can uh, just be a little more fair, and it won't be in literally every heart deck. I mean, it still will probably be in literally every heart deck, because Jar of Souls is one of like the most powerful yes. builds around in like, Skyweaver, so it will probably still be around. I will mention there was a time when it was like first pitched as like four cost and it was just like oh, no. <laughs> we can't do that <laughs> it also used to not give hex so you could reuse like three spells that were attached to units which was crazy it made vashiva so nutty when you could reuse her like raise arms and get mummies and all sorts of stuff but yeah this should keep jar um i think it'll still be very powerful but just a little slower a little more of an opportunity cost a little more bricky in early hands <laughs> Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm looking forward to this, honestly. I'm very, very much excited. So let's go to the next one, which is Champ. So Champ is basically, it went from having Wither and now it doesn't have Wither anymore. So why did you remove Wither from Champ? What about uh, Champ has been doing incredibly well since he got his plus one attack, uh, and fire decks on the whole have been on the rise lately. And Champ is just a card that's kind of clean. We don't have that many cards with no keywords at all, so I don't really mind having just this sort of vanilla creature uh, 
that passes in. And every time a card gets or loses Wither, Bacon reminds me that this somehow affects the Foul Stench metagame that I totally <laughs> forgot about. <laughs> the Foul Stench meta. Um, yeah, but I think it should still be good. I mean, it's still got it's still like effectively a four or four that draws you a one cost, provided you can trigger its effect, which is kind of bonkers for three costs. So it should still yeah. be very strong. Yeah, champ is a strong chimp. Okay, <laughs> very strong one still. <laughs> um, but no, that's good. That's good. Not bad at all. So let's go down to the next one, which is honk. So a few changes here. So the text went uh, the. Text effect went from none to play. Your hero attacks target enemy unit. And it went from having four power to three power. And now it comes with no spell. So what was the reason behind this? The reason is complicated and we'll come to and we'll come to light later. Um, but basically I wanted to um, remove Honk's montage uh, in the effort of some prism shifting to clean up uh, the prism identity. And that is all I will say for that now. But I do think that this is actually quite a powerful card because the ability to instantly deal two damage via an extra hero attack, like normally banner gives you plus one damage. This effectively gives you plus three damage just on its own because you can attack twice with a two attack hero, once when Honk is played and then once afterwards. So it can effectively allow you to deal like plus three damage the turn it's played on curve, which is why I reduced its attack. Mm -hmm. um, like, true. if you think of this, how this used to be Fury Mask, this is like what Fury Mask was, but now you get a 3-2 banner body out of this. So I think this is actually a really powerful curve play here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Also, welcome to everyone in chat. <laughs> but this is really, really good. Um, I think I think this is pretty powerful. I can see myself using that. I think banner is very strong and all those decks with a bunch of banner cards are going to get very scary once Honk is thrown in. <laughs> so it should be uh, well, quite... You'll just stick around, Leanne. You'll be okay. <laughs> it's like... Um, you're getting there. It's okay. Um, I, I apologize if there's some echo. There shouldn't be, but... Usually there isn't, but if there is, I, I greatly apologize. Let me know if it gets better. All right. Um, okay, let me go down to the next card now. So the next change we have is Sky Phoenix, the rainbow card, the rainbow bird. This bird is not on fire. Um, so we went basically from 6 health to 7 health. And what was the reason for adding this? This is... Just a little bit of a spicy change to try to make Phoenix a little more durable. <laughs> it's it, it's a good card. Like, Phoenix is not a bad card. It's a perennially popular card. Um, it's a fun wisdom card, which just that bacon is ribbing wisdom here again. But, yeah, so this is part of a sort of change I've made to a couple wisdom cards this patch. But the idea being that if we buff some wisdom cards a little bit, then wisdom can actually go on the offensive in the mid-game a bit rather than just being like, well, I have to stall till 17 mana to make good plays. Uh, and it should also improve Wisdom a bit in Discovery and stuff like that, since Phoenix is now a bit better when you can't get its crazy revive game off. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, man, chat is really funny today. <laughs> so I'm loving this. But yeah, this is good. What do we all think of the Sky Phoenix change, everyone? Wisdom has a right to play not degenerate games. <laughs> Bake <Yeah>. it! <laughs> um, six six would very often see three damage and another three damage that does. Nice, great change. Okay, cool. Seems like very it's very positively re received and. I like the eight seven six numbering, especially since seven is the colors in the rainbow. There's seven of them, so it matches the. Yeah. <coughs> For sure. Eight for the elements in Skyweaver and seven for the colors in the rainbow. And for sure. I, I, I was too worried to put it to a seven seven, which was considered. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Coulter, you're singing the music of the night to everyone, for real. Like, music to all of our ears. So here is Olympia, the next card change, um, which basically got lifesteal. What? That, that's awesome. <laughs> Hold on. Why? Tell, tell us why. 
Uh, Olympia is just like literally bottom five strength cards or something. It used to be crazy OP because it was like a three two armor, and with Gift of Kwai that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of been languishing lately because it just didn't have the curve presence. Um, but uh, so I want to give it a buff. And in addition, strength is supposed to have life steal, like a number of life steal cards, because that's how it heals is by leveraging its unit based game plan with life steal to heal itself. And last week, Mushka lost her life steal last time, and we moved it to Dracomantium. But I still wanted to add a little more rather than going net neutral. So yeah, Olympia got a little buff with life steal. She's also kind of a light card, mm -hmm. so it fits in thematically with the idea of healing. Yeah, for sure. Definitely fits the identity. And and I, I love lifesteal cards. <laughs> um, I feel like I've wondered about possibly, like, reformatting the name of lifesteal because it feels vampiric or evil where it should feel... It should be more open-ended as to how it works. Kind of like Wither can be as a result of frostbite or flames mm -hmm. or poison or, like, thematically, Wither comes from a lot of sources. So lifesteal can be, like, vampires, but it can also be, like clerics kind of who when they succeed in battle they heal and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it'd be interesting. i don't want it to feel too evil it's supposed to be sort of that's why like when dracomantium got it everyone thought it was weird they're like is it a vampire now or whatever <laughs> vampire dragon <laughs> yeah. i mean soul sucking marcello you are biased it's the vampy cards <laughs> um yeah, I, yeah. I mean, hey, leave some ideas in chat. We'd love to see it. <laughs> I do like magics. Like life link is a nice one, but Ooh. I'm actually not sure if we'd have to restructure all of our little <laughs> bubble or badges. And life no, steel sure. isn't. Yeah, it, it's true. But despite, despite the association, as Blood Heal is saying, life steel is very common in gaming. So mm -hmm. it's like everyone kind of understands that, no matter what games they play, which would probably help new players as well. Um, but no, but still, it, it, it's good. I, I definitely see what you mean. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Probably feels awfully funky. It might be better to make it separate. Because <laughs> it only works on heroes, right? Which is cool, but at the same time, it's probably jarring for a lot of new players. Yeah. All right, let's sleep on it. Leave some suggestions. Let us know what you think. Beta patch discussions is always open, right? We'd love to hear it. So the next card is Encapsulate. And this change... So basically... It's It went from dust target unit, both players conjure a spell of its element, to dust target unit, conjure a spell of its element onto your hero. And Coulter, tell us why did you make this change? Yeah, so this is kind of just a little bit of a change to see if this would work. Um, Encapsulate has actually been seeing some play based on the stats. I saw in a number of decks, but... I really like the idea that Encapsulate is a super premium piece of removal that represents the idea that Intellect has mastery over destroying things. Uh, so yeah, this is just a bit of a buff to that. It also serves to rein in death effects and stuff by making Encapsulate more generally playable. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't really mind that Agility has a very powerful removal, or uh, Intellect has a very powerful removal tool like this. Like if Agility has cards like Champ and stuff that are its flagships, Right. And great. So then intellect gets like a super powerful piece of removal. Also, it's not a strict buff because before it was very easy to play encapsulate because it just went to your hand. Like even though it did give your opponent something, uh, now it will overwrite any attachment on your hero mm -hmm. and the spell is no longer safe because it might in turn get overwritten by something else. So it requires you to think a bit more when using it, but it makes it generally a stronger card. Yeah, I, I like I like this. I, I really do like this. This is great. And you know what? I've, I've I realized in my streams that I've been having a really hard time with intellect decks for some reason. Maybe it's just me. But you know what? I think, Coulter, you have inspired me to make the theme for my next week's stream submissions to be, like, intellect. All intellect decks. So I'm very excited intellect. to see how this new patch comes into play with that. <laughs> intellect, like, theme is that it has the best... It doesn't have much healing, unlike Wisdom and mm -hmm. Heart, which are prisms that focus on yeah. healing to sustain themselves but what intellect does have is the ability to blast things off the face of the earth with impunity oh. it's, the, it's supposed to have the best removal of any prism that's basically the, most, the cleanest removal of any prism yeah so that's that's really good to know because that explains why i was losing so much i really rely on heals when i play but um yeah that's great to know i would love to see this um you know, this is amazing 
As one final note, I also like that this, the, the theme of Encapsulate, I think, is that it's like a cursed jar or something that like sucks in the essence of something and traps it. So the idea that your hero like collects the essence onto themselves rather than cutting the creature in half and giving each people person a spell fits better. This was actually the design of Encapsulate from like six months ago. It just used to cost six and then I buffed it down the curve but also nerfed its effect of giving spells because I thought it'd be too strong and it might be too good but aggro decks are again i've always had the opinion that if we can move towards like the mid game of skyweaver being very powerful then that will sort of help heal the late and early games a little because it makes aggro less good and it also makes heavy control less good so mm -hmm. to have powerful mid gamey cards like encapsulate kind of punishes people for stalling a bit because you can power up your mid game a bit more and also gives yeah. people a chance to survive versus aggro a little more. Yeah, hundred percent. Seems like everyone's on the same page. That's great. Um, cool. So the next change that we're gonna get into is Wicked Twister. So this change is basically um, uh, it's just simplifying it. So Glory dust the enemy's top dead card for each damage done. Um, to Glory dust the enemy's top five dead cards. So, yeah, tell us about this one a little bit. This was just to simplify it because the rules text for it was rather confusing and it was only used by Wicked Twister. And mm -hmm. Wicked Twister is a card that sees very little play to begin with. So I just <laughs> this is a little <laughs> bit of a buff to Wicked Twister, but it also doesn't really make... It's, again, it's in service of how can we make the game a little easier for new players to Yeah, understand. 100%. 100%. Cool. So also, then... I saw people jabbing me about calling encapsulated cursed jar it's not like a cursed jar it's like a magic jar or whatever that you trap an enemy's essence <laughs> it's a card, like people are right. saying so it's like makes sense all right so this is a fun change we have colossoid mm -hmm. um colter tell us about this change i'll, I'll let you take it <laughs> yeah uh so this is a change i've been con contemplating for a little while i don't think it's gonna change colossoid's whole life or anything but it's it should be fun it gives colossa a little more value late game where zomboids are like nothing in the late game because they're so small they're good for chipping your opponent but your opponent probably won't trade into zomboids unless they have to so this makes it so that you have to when colossoid dies it creates an army with guard so you can just fill up or you can play out zomboids to defend mm -hmm. yourself with Mm -hmm. versus something like wild dead if you get like six zomboids you could play out like three of them like you can kind of tactically rather than just saying i'm gonna play as many as i can you could maybe say i'm gonna save some zomboids for next turn and use like the guards sparingly to constantly give defense mm -hmm. oh my gosh yeah. i yeah i was just thinking about this too because i've been playing a lot of like um like 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 you know just using wall of the dead a lot recently and i'm like man i would love like if if we had that option with the zomboid with card in my hand so yes great change love it <laughs> just love it um cool colossoid and scythe that's your favorite zomboid combo nice i'm definitely yeah. gonna try that hey philippe are you guys should submit me decks for my stream too i would love to try them <laughs> anyways Cool. So moving on now, we're going to go into Drum Up. And Drum Up basically went from draw one cost unit, a two cost unit, and three cost unit to now draw a one cost unit, two cost unit, and three cost unit. Give them anima. Oh, oof, oof. All right, tell us why did you make this decision, Colter? Uh, because Drum Up is, like, a really underused card again. Normally I look at our stats and I'm like, what cards were played, like, ten times this month or something? And Drum Up was fairly down there, and it just wasn't very exciting, and I love Anima a lot. People have already figured out how you move Anima and take advantage of it, I see. If you draw a champ with this and he passes Anima, he'll buff mm -hmm. himself by passing it, which can be very powerful, but that's what I like. If Agility... If, if it's viable for agility to waste five mana out of its tempo game plan to draw like a cookbook a champ and like you could draw like something like cobalt if you're in uh, agility and then all of those as soon as they're played will destroy their anima and buff themselves so this is kind of like a gift of swords type thing mm -hmm. um that could do some 
nutty things with Champ and Lao Sensei or Hot Dog. You get Hot Dog with Anima off drum up and he's a 4-4 that can swing immediately. So I think this is a really, will once again be a really cool combo starter. I actually thought about dropping Banner off it for this change because I think it's quite powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm beeping in the background. Beeping? <laughs> I don't hear anything. Um, yeah. Let me know if it goes away. Sorry, continue Coulter. Yeah, and I see some people saying I don't think it's actually really good. And yeah, I agree. This this probably this may not be good enough, but I like that it gives agility like a reload that they can turbocharge themselves with, with like cookbook and stuff. Like if you have played this on six, you could play a cookbook or something for one mana, uh, and it would immediately go to a. Th Who knows? Um, I don't know. It's just a cool way. I like more ways to interact with anima, and I think this is a change to a card. It is also flavorful because the idea is you use the power of nature or whatever to drum up and empower some units. Nice, nice. Um, cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, also, really, really quick about the high pitched noise thing. Let me know if it goes away or if you recognize where it's coming from because I don't hear anything. But um, yeah, it'll just help me to solve that issue on stream. But yes, cool. So. It's good also. I also wanted to note this could be pretty neat for some wisdom agility kind of control decks because wisdom has a really good target for this in earth warden which becomes a two six guard for two mana if it gets an anima on it which is a really good roadblock mm -hmm. so this could actually allow agility to branch out into some control builds potentially mm -hmm. cool very very cool all right thanks um, so let's go to the next change, which is Arcadia Mask. <gasps> it went from a six cost to a five cost. What? Okay. Um, what, what is going on here? We got to know. This is a change, which again is for the idea that can wisdom be used. Yes. So agility is getting the control tools and wisdom is getting the aggro tools here. <laughs> the idea being that that Mask really, like Mutichi, both of these cards are like super powerful spell payoffs, but they just cost a little too much. So like Mask, the thing with Mask is that you have to wait till like turn 20 to play it and then you try to get, aggro out a bunch of spells because its stat line is just too bad at six cost. But at five cost, you could potentially play it on curve and try to draw with, try to play it tempo with its Mask to draw a new hand and maybe draw a spell onto it from outside. And so it's like actually kind of good to just play it out on five and try to roll with it. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually think that what this is, is like secretly a stealth buff, less so to control decks because they could often afford like having one less mana or whatever when you're waiting till turn 20 to play Arcadium Mask mm -hmm. isn't that big a deal. But what it is a big deal is if there's any sort of sort of tempo wisdom decks that want to roll out Arcadium Mask early and try to reap rewards off it like if you're a, like an agility wisdom aggro deck or something like that or a strength wisdom like sort of tempo-ish deck playing mask early and using it to continually like present a massive threat that generates value could be very valuable for more aggressive strategies so i i think that this is really a in service of buffing more aggressive decks via giving them more options and again more ways for wisdom to win the mid game rather than mm -hmm. uh further bolstering control decks. It does help control decks a bit. But again, this was brought on by the fact that Arcadia Mask is like in the bottom 10 wisdom cards in the whole game right now, stats-wise. So clearly he's just not really working. But then again, Mask is something that seems to always either be broken or terrible, and there's very little <laughs> in between, so we will have to see. Cool. Yeah, it should be, should be fun. I know there's some polarized set polaroids polarized sentiments in the chat so this is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out um whoops. i will also kind of mention that from a game design perspective it's kind of interesting because arcadia mask is kind of like a worse lyra the sun shard from hearthstone which is a priest card that would generate a priest spell into your hand every time you played a spell and lyra was not particularly game breaking and that's why it's interesting with skyweaver because unlike something like Hearthstone, where you can print something uber broken like Lyra into a deck and be sure that it will never escape its confines, because we have our prism system, Mask has so much more stuff that it can slot into. And that's what I've always thought. Like, Hearthstone can print things that are so busted, and it's because they know they can trap it in one 
class and it'll be safe there. They can test for a more limited amount of interactions, whereas with Skyweaver, it's always a gamble. To mm -hmm. some extent, like, because there's always something secretive that someone could come up with using... Like, I'm not saying it's always... I think it's always a gamble is probably too negative, but it's always, there's so much more possibility space to explore, which is something I really like about it, but it means that sometimes you need to be more conservative with <laughs> card changes, right. but this is one that I think it I will think be surprising. Cool. It will either surprise me and it will break the metagame, which I think is pretty unlikely, or it will be surprising because I think it will still probably not be that game break <laughs> no honestly i like it i really like the ambiguity with that and i think it's fun to experiment with stuff like that and just you know just have fun with the game and, and with some of the random mechanics in that sense right like what am i gonna conjure like this is gonna be interesting to see how it plays out right so um i definitely think it's cool and it it shakes things up a bit so um great um so let's move on to the next change um which is shield so this is mostly just like a wording change. Um, Coulter, do you want to run over the wording change real quick? Yeah, these, unlike the changes to Anima, have no practical like change. It's again, it's just easier for new players to read. It's better, better wording, and it's just better wording overall. It's only like a couple characters longer, and it's much cleaner. If the enchanted character would take combat damage, dust this enchant to prevent it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, rather than dust this enchant instead, which was technically correct, but it was based more on an interpretation more on uh, knowledge of how replacement effects work in Magic the Gathering, uh, where a replacement effect is mm -hmm. you can replace one action, like dealing damage with another. Um, and in this case, what S.H.I.E.L.D. did was it acted as a replacement effect uh, for when damage was dealt. And you used to see that what would happen is that S.H.I.E.L.D. would dust itself and damage would not even appear on the unit. But that was changed a while back, actually, because, A, it was kind of confusing um, because, like, you could miss... It, it wouldn't... Like, if you moused over, it wouldn't actually show a damage preview. It wouldn't show that it would deal zero damage. It would show mm -hmm. nothing at all, which which was a little bit am, 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 ambiguous. And in addition, it had an issue with random damage targeting where, like, a priority damage targeting would actually avoid shields or... It would avoid barriers, actually. If something like Lightning Vial would actually swerve around barriers because it knew that it wouldn't be able to damage things. Now, we've moved past uh, random damage targeting since then, but those were some internal changes, which is why when something like Shield activates, it now says zero rather than just vanishing without pre presenting any damage calculation. Mm -hmm. So this is more accurate to that, too, because the Shield is dusted and prevents the damage rather than being dusted in place of the damage taking place. Yeah. Oh, yeah, makes perfect sense. Perfect sense to me. And it's the same thing with barrier, is that right? Yeah, Yeah. barrier is the cool. exact same change. It just has the word N-O-N dash before combat, but otherwise it's exactly wow. the same card. Awesome. So then let's get into our prism shifts. Um, that's what's up next. So let's, let's just get right into it. We are going to start with Grasp of Kraken. All right, so this, cha this, oh, this change from poem. agility... Sorry, Colter, do you want to tell us a bit about this? Yeah, so Grass with Kraken got moved to the token prism. It was kind of just a bad smite. It was a bit clunky, and the main reason uh, that it got removed was to make room for the pr other prism shift. When I looked at all the two-cost uh, agility cards, this spells this looked like the, the um, sort of least relevant one, so I just decided to move it out. I actually could see it returning in the future. I thought of an mm. interesting idea for how to change it. Yeah. Grasp sort of served a interesting role in that it showed how bad agility is supposed to be at removing big units. <laughs> that agility is supposed to have poor single target removal. Um, it does have like Hurricane and Maelstrom, but like when it comes to removing single target units, agility is supposed to be pretty bad at it. So it sort of highlighted that, uh, that it wasn't good at uh, removing big units, but it just wasn't worth keeping in for there. So it's on Krakus, but other than that... Cool. All right, um, cool. So then let's move on to the next one, to Montage. Montage? Montage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, tell us about this one, Coulter. So now it is where I've always thought Montage should be an agility card, because agility is about using your hero. It's about attacking and stuff. 
Oh. Yeah, I never intended to kill Banner Combo. I really like Banner Combo. But at the same time, Montage being in Heart made about zero sense to me. <laughs> so I actually think that Banner Combo, although it's a little weaker since technically you could do Heart. Technically, you can't do the double Montage with Heart Agility anymore. You now have access to the better Montage card yeah. in the Agility Prism. Uh, I removed the clause where it gave Shroud, which is sort of a buff or a nerf, depending. Shroud on the hero is not usually super relevant. Like, if you're trying to use it to dodge a fireball, you're probably already losing. Um, mm. Yeah. So, yeah. This, this... Uh, not having Honk could potentially also... You could do something weird with Honk, where you could, like, bounce it to play Montage multiple times. Um... But yeah, this should probably be a sizable buff to the banner combo just because it makes it effectively like cost three less. So hopefully it's not too overpowered here. Um, cool. Awesome. I think no. it should probably be manageable because banner combo, if anything, maybe it's wisdom's tools for discounting stuff that need to be appraised. I don't think montage single handedly. Yeah. Uh, break it. Mm hmm. No, that's great. That's that's great. This is gonna oh, this is gonna be very exciting. I have to say, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, super hype. Um, let's go to the next prism. Sh uh, not prism shift. New card. <laughs> All right. Are, who is ready for the reveal? This is the final reveal. The next new thing. The next new best thing. All right. Let's go. New card over here. We've got Phoenix Plume. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about this card Coulter give us give us what you got so Phoenix Bloom this is a design I've been thinking about for a while and I actually sort of it, it will seem like it's sort of a knockoff of Molten Heart but it was more that I didn't have room for Phoenix Plume at the time and I wanted to kind of test its effect so Molten Heart kind of ran past the finish line before Plume could be added to the game this is a very nice piece of art uh, that I wanted to try that basically I came up with this effect for pretty fast and it's just a very cool heart card. It's another way to recur Titanic, which is a little, <laughs> a little goofy. <laughs> um, I knew that Bacon was going to say that, but at the same time, if you're paying 13 mana to bring Titanic back and play it, uh, I think that's fairly okay because then you're not getting the benefit of plume be plume triggering death effects. Um, <laughs> Bacon's new Infinite signature card, dinosaur. Infinite Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. Also a little less effective than like Evermore, which also gets back the bottom card. So it should be fun. It ties into um, agility or parts theme of, of death effect abuse and recurring stuff. And it's just a kind of fun card. It mm -hmm. also works well with Phoenix, which is obviously you can, if you have Phoenix in play and your opponent doesn't kill it, you can like, or if they do kill it, you can just burn them again with Phoenix Plume. So mm -hmm. Plume, honestly, at two cost, it might not be able to stay at two cost. Another design I had was it, like, buffed the unit it brought back at three cost. But since I traded Montage to Agility, I wanted to use it at two cost uh, to fill the hole that uh, Montage left with. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited to play, mo like, more Mono Heart. I've been really, really enjoying the Mono Heart decks ever since I had people submit me some. And, man, I think it's my new favorite, and this is this is great. I think this I'm going to make so many fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> cool all right well that's that's basically a wrap everyone um for all of our balance changes and new card changes and prism shifts um are there any last words you want to add coulter i see that people are like cards getting removed next patch swear to god <laughs> <laughs> Sick oh burn plus Phoenix Bloom for turn two Hydraxes. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> lots yeah. and lots of potential Bloom here. may not be able to stay at two costs, but I mean, when it comes to recurring stuff like Titanic, I feel like Evermore is still a lot more value, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Like, Plume is good specifically when you can abuse it with some sort of death effect, which mm. is, I think a lot of people are fussing with. So hopefully everyone will enjoy this patch and it'll be a very exciting kind of new patch yeah. this is probably i haven't added new cards or done prism shifts in a long time and that's because with the exception of this montage change and honestly maw worm being agility is still weird but <laughs> it feels like a heart card but um yeah i really think that our prism identities are very consolidated now they've still got some 
diversity, which I like. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some weird cards, like Mad Vibes is still, or uh, Confuse Ray is still an agility. Again, it's like a weak, big removal. Um, so yeah, I like that there's a lot of diversity in effects, but they also feel very consolidated with Montage now being moved into agility. So I feel like we're in a really good place in terms of making sure each prism has a very distinct like identity, which is something I've been working on since I took over as the game designer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to consolidate all our prisms and make them feel very unique and very distinct while still they still have plenty of room to wiggle around in their identities. So nice nice oh my gosh great thank you colter and thank you everyone for joining the stream um one last time i'm gonna scroll up really fast and we're gonna go to the top and just i want to i just want everyone to see the beautiful sparkly and turn button once more you know just just take in the new animations one last time but yeah, that's that's a wrap. I hope you're loving this patch, the shininess, the spiciness, the beauty, just everything, the Valentine's Day love that we're giving you. <laughs> so let us know what you think in beta patch discussions. Um, don't forget to like just throw suggestions for other names for lifesteal because why not? It would just be fun to brainstorm, right? Um, but yeah, um, on that note, I will see you all next time. Marcelo has a stream on Friday at 5.30 p.m. so don't forget to tune in and just a little quick update um, I'm also streaming on Wednesday mornings on YouTube and Facebook at the same time 10 30 a.m. EST so that's more of a Skyweaver 101 but like discovery mode still fun so just so you know we've got a bunch of new stuff happening oh and submit me your decks we're doing intellect themed decks for next Tuesday so yeah um, see you all next time and take care everyone bye Goodbye. Have a good one.